If you're interested in learning more about IP monitoring, be sure to check out our Juno security course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the course in the keyword search box. And if you're preparing for certification, this subject also appears on the JNCIE security certification exam. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hi, my name is Ryan Israel. I'm a tech lead with Juniper Network's certification program. And this learning bite is on chassis cluster IP monitoring. IP monitoring allows the redundancy group to monitor upstream resources by pinging specific IP addresses that are reachable through redundant Ethernet interfaces on either node in a chassis cluster. It's kind of similar to um, interface monitoring, whereas if an interface goes down, the weight causes a threshold of the redundancy group to uh, count down to zero. Once that reaches zero, then it um, fails over to the other node. IP monitoring is similar and said that it's um, monitoring an, an IP address to do the same failover. Here's a configuration example of uh, IP monitoring. The uh, global weight default is 255 and that is the uh, weight that is um, subtracted from the redundancy group so if you set that below 255 it won't be enough to actually cause the uh, failover to occur. Um, also um, the uh, global threshold is the actual weight for the interface that we're monitoring. So we, in this example here, we have a, uh, a weight of uh, 128. And then once that um, interface, or once that IP address is no longer reachable, this weight is deducted from the global threshold. So if the global threshold is configured higher than the actual weight, it won't be enough to trigger the uh, global weight to deduct from the redundancy group. Um, and then there's also the uh, retry interval, and that's how often that it uh, tries to ping the IP address and then the retry count, which is uh, how many times it's going to try to ping the uh, IP address before it considers it no longer available. And then the other uh, configuration option is your um, secondary IP address, which is the uh, address that is used by the uh, backup, the secondary node to test. It will allow you to um, not configure the secondary IP address, but you will get a warning that there is um, limited capability, and that is because that's the IP address that is used to send the pings um, from the secondary node. So that IP address should be um, within that uh, same subnet as your uh, your ETH interfaces. So this is a topology. Uh, we're using just a simple uh, chassis cluster and we'll have an IP address that's in the internet and what I'll do is I'll um, deactivate uh, this interface that's on the switch on uh, SRX1 and so that SRX1 is no longer able to reach that IP address and which will cause the, uh, the failover. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the, um, the actual uh, test. Okay, we're logged into SRX1 and uh, this is uh, the current configuration. We're monitoring um, uh, this 190 IP address with a uh, weight of 128. Um, with the current um, configuration, once that IP address becomes no longer available, this 128 will be uh, deducted from the global threshold. And once the global threshold gets to zero or below, then this global weight of 150 will be uh, deducted from the uh, REF group threshold. Remember that weight needs to get to 255 before the failover will actually occur. So with this current configuration, it's not um, going to do anything, but this way I could actually uh, show you how it works. Um, let's take a look at the current um, status. Currently, um, the uh, node zero is the, the primary, and the current um, IP monitoring is currently uh, reachable um, from both nodes. So we'll go ahead and um, bring down that interface on uh, SRX1. Okay. And now if we monitor, we should see that it becomes unreachable. Okay, now it's unreachable. And you can see that 128 is deducted from the uh, threshold, but it's still not low enough to do anything. And if we go to um, the actual chassis cluster status, nothing has changed. So. 
So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, re-enable that again. And should be okay. So everything's back to normal. So let's let's uh, let's fix this here. Make it the same as the. Um, let's go ahead and make it the same as the the uh, weight that we applied to that uh, my IP address. I'll go go ahead and commit that. Okay, now that the commit is done, we'll uh, try this test again. And our current status is everything is reachable, and now we have a new uh, global threshold. Okay. So now it's unreachable, and now that the threshold is a zero, it should cause the global weight to to be taken away from the uh, redundancy group. But it's still not going to do anything. It shows that it's that the uh, IP monitoring is your is monitoring the failure, but it's not high enough because the um, the uh, global uh, weight isn't high enough to do anything. So there's no change in failover. And the reason why this becomes unreachable for both is because it's still using your uh, primary node to reach that. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, make that last change on the config. Let's put that weight, that global weight to 255 so that it's high enough to cause the failover. Okay, I'll go ahead and put everything back to the way it was. Bring the interface back up and then we'll go ahead and commit this change. Okay, okay now that the uh, commit is complete, let's um, where everything's at. So now that we have the global weights high enough to cause the uh, failover. And everything's reachable. And node zero is to the primary, so let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and uh, bring down that interface again. Okay. All right, now it's become unreachable. The uh, weight brought the threshold to zero. That's high enough that the global threshold will trigger the uh, global weight to be deducted from the redundancy uh, group weight. And if we go look at the chassis cluster status, we should see now that it's failed over to node one as the uh, primary and the reasoning for the uh, failover is because of the IP monitoring. Um, this uh, concludes our um, learning bite. You can find more information on chassis cluster IP monitoring in our tech docs. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.